evolutionary.org podcast come your way. This is number 319. Question and answer Q&A episode. Steve Smee here and Rick. What's going on? Hey, what's up, Steve? What's up, guys? How's everybody doing out there? Doing good. Doing good, man. So listen, we're going to talk about five great topics, guys. Let's get right into it. So the first topic was sent in. He wants to know the best cycle to run if money was not an issue. So this is kind of a, a dream cycle. So for me, you know, based on my current goals and future goals and the way I approach anabolic steroid use, for me, my dream cycle, Rick, would be Primo and Anavar. And I'm a little greedy on this one because he said money was not an issue. So Primo and Anavar are two of the most expensive steroids out there. I can remember the first time I used Primo, I ordered it. It was Bear Primo. I got it from overseas, uh, I think an Easter European source. It got sent to me. It took like five weeks to get to me. I spent in excess of, I think, eleven dollars or $1,200 on that cycle. Very, very expensive. And boy, were their injections painful on the Primo. But it was, a, it was an amazing cycle. It's expensive as heck, but it's a great, great steroid. And an Anavar, it's another one. Um, I'm surprised when I ran Anavar because everyone says, oh, it's a weak steroid. It's a steroid for women. I ran like 50, 50 or 60 milligrams a day. And I'll tell you what, the strength was incredible on Anavar. So, uh, I mean, those would be the two I would run if money was not an option. And, um, you know, you're looking at easy four-figure number. Uh, if, you, if you run those and you get them, at a, a very good pharmaceutical grade brand, you know? So it's an expensive one. Those two would be really, really expensive. It'd give you good clean gains. It would not give you a lot of um, bad mass. It'd be all clean mass. It's just a very small amount increase in your weight, but it'd be all clean. It'd be just a lot of good clean muscle gains, lean muscle gains. And side effects would be low. You wouldn't have to worry about side effects. And uh, gosh, it would be an amazing cycle. Maybe one day, um, if I hit the lottery or something, Rick, I'll, I'll be able to afford a, a Primo and Anavar cycle because that sounds amazing. Together, I've never ran them together. I ran them separately. I can't afford to run them together, but if I could afford it and money was not an issue, that would be my choice. How about you? Hit the nail on the head. Yeah, Anavar and Primo Bolin. Legitimate, good Anavar legitimate good primo volan if money wasn't an option and legitimacy wasn't going to be a problem those two be the ones i'd go for if i wanted to make that cycle more involved a little bit bigger give people a little bit more of an outlook out there primo volan anabar human growth hormone in gw carterine if you could get legitimate versions of all of those and get them at a decent price, that would be the perfect cycle to just completely recomp, recomposition and just remake the way you look. Good human growth hormone between four to eight IUs a day, depending on, on what you can tolerate, what your pocket can take and, and what you're looking to do. Primo Bolin, good four to 800 milligrams a week, depending on budget and depending on your goals. Anavar. No less than 40 milligrams, ideally 60 between in there, milligrams per day for a dude. And GW, carterine, okay? Those four, sorry, you got two steroids, you got a peptide and a SARM. That's a great stack for just completely changing the way your body looks. You can, you can just melt the fat off and put on a lot of good, hard, quality, good quality mass that you're going to be able to keep long term. What else would I throw on top of that? Definitely Novadex all the time. I'm not worried about the Primo or the Anavar aromatizing and giving me any high estrogen and giving me gynecomastia. However, that Primo and that Anavar, they're going to compete with my own testosterone for, for androgen receptors, leaving more of my own testosterone out and about to run into the aromatase enzyme and get some conversion. So even while using compounds that don't particularly aromatize, estrogen can still get a little bit high. This is why you'll still get suppression with Primo Bolin and Anavol. So I definitely would use Novadex on top of that. I would use HG Generate ES 
to keep me away from being suppressed. And obviously money's not an issue, right? So I'm using the, the big boy, H generate ES version, you know, looking at six grams of total active ingredients per day there. Now, I would also use Entuslin 30 minutes before every single meal. Entuslin is gonna help that GW and that Anabar together burn fat off of me real quickly. I mean, it'll be, unless I'm trying to be an asshole and eat like shit on the cycle, fat's gonna be melting off right away while my strength increases, while my endurance increases too, by the way. Obviously, I would take Entugard, that goes without saying, by taking Anabars and Oral, need to take Entugard, Primo Ball, and gotta take Entugard. Now, tell the guys I like to do testosterone with pretty much every cycle. On this one, I wouldn't do testosterone. I would just take AC Generate ES and write that out because I'd want to get to about a gram a week of just Primo and Anabar. That would be that would be golden. Now, if I wanted to get really big, I would add testosterone and Masteron to the cycle. Testosterone and Masteron, I would add I would add those two in. If I wanted to make this like a real crazy competition, let's say I was going into a, into a competition cycle, then it would be something along the lines of testosterone masteron. That'd kind of be a little bit of my of my base. Might get away if I tweak those those the dosing right, I might get away with that, with not having to use aromacin. And I could use the masteron uh with the testosterone. You know, if I get over 500 megs of test, I might still need the aromacin. If I add the test, maybe drop the ES. Uh, I, I don't know. I mean, it, there's definitely a lot of choices I need to make there depending on my goals. But yeah, long story short, perfect cycle. If money was not an issue, if everything was legit, Primo Bolin, Anabar, Human Growth Hormone, and Carterin. Uh, unfortunate thing is those four are all very incredibly hard to find in good quality human grain. So that's it. What do you think, Steve? Yeah, money's not an issue. Trust me, you'll be able to find what you want. There's, uh, there's always that availability. You could always just go to an anti-aging clinic. Uh, that's all they want anyway is money, right? They want your money. And, they won't uh, prescribe Primo uh, now, will they? Will an American anti-aging clinic? I know they'll prescribe Anabar, but what about Primo Bolin? They don't, right? No, they're not going to prescribe Primo, unfortunately, because uh, Primo is illegal. Um, so you can't even get a prescription. Anabar you can still get. Yeah. Anabar you can still get, no problem. Yeah. And but you, I think, yeah. And, and human, if you can get your Anabar and your human growth hormone from your clinic, then you get your D, GW and your Primo Bolin from, from a trusted, trusted source that you, you might be onto something. Yeah. Um, I would think if money wasn't an issue, though, you could kind of pay someone in another country to just grab you some legitimate pharmacy grade Primo and uh, ship it over to you. And even if it was seized, who cares? I mean, money's not an issue. So, um, that would be that would be the option. Yep. So, but that yeah, that's a that's a great. What, what countries? Here. What countries is still have pharmacy grade Primo? Like Greece, I think Italy, maybe France. Greece, Italy, France. What else? And probably those those uh, old Eastern Bloc countries, right? Yeah, like Moldova and those. Uh, those yeah, like Moldova, like Georgia, like Ukraine, like those places. Yeah, yeah I think the misconception is Americans. Yeah, <laughs> but the misconception is a lot of Americans think that those countries where steroids are, you can just you know buy pharmacy grade steroids in a pharmacy. That everybody's like walking around all buff and and muscular, and it's not the case. <laughs> you know, that's just not the way it works. Culture plays a big role. Culture plays. A well, big role. I think I think it, when it's legal, people don't want to use it. You know, but when it's illegal, ooh, you know, we get a little. You know, now we're kind of being rebellious using it, and I think that's part of the allure of steroid use with uh with people so yeah from what you just said though about primo now people that are listening they want to use primo even more now because uh you, you can't, there's not even it's not even legal to uh prescribe it, primo so. bolin is incredible primo bolin is an incredible steroid so we're going to go into a next topic guys the second topic of the day number two being lethargic on testosterone all day and having a hard time sleeping so what causes this so the number there's a couple things um, that kind of have a domino effect. When you're, when you're running a testosterone, it aromatizes into estrogen. You get bloated. You're carrying around this water all day. So doesn't that make sense? If you're carrying around jugs of water all day on your back that you're going to feel lethargic. And then it's going to strain your heart. Your heart health is going to take a beating because you're carrying all that extra water. And then when you have a poor heart health, just like most people in America have sleeping problems. 
And uh, one of the main reasons for sleeping problems is also heart disease. So it's just the domino effect of what's happening here. So the first thing I'd want you to do if I was advising you, if you were my client, is I would tell you, go get blood work. Not, not tomorrow, not the day after, but now, today. Next chance you get, tomorrow morning, go get blood work. If you go on the forum, Steve SMI, my signature, I always have a link to how you can get blood work fast and cheap. It's gonna cost you about 70 bucks. I have a coupon code there. 70 bucks, print it out, take it in to the lab, get your blood work done the next day, you'll get results. And then you'll see, is my estrogen out of control? Now, if your estrogen is out of control, boom. That's one of the main reasons why you have this problem. So now you can correct that. You're going to do a combination of lowering the dose and upping your AI, or you can up the AI. But you, you want to see what's going on. Am I even on an AI? Is my AI legit? Is my AI bunk? Is, it un, is my AI not doing what it's supposed to do? So you need to figure that one out. Next, next thing I want to look at is your heart health. Did you go into cycle already with heart health issues? Like, can you run a mile in under eight minutes? If you can't run a mile in under eight minutes, then your heart health is poor, in my, in my opinion. Unless you're like 60 years old or something, I don't know. But I mean, anyone who's healthy under 40, you should be able to run a mile in eight minutes. No problem. I mean, I go to the park and I see kids running a mile in eight minutes. I see people who don't even look like they work out. They never exercise the end of life running a mile in eight minutes. So I don't understand why you can't run a mile in eight minutes. That's a red flag that you just don't have a, hearthy, um, a healthy heart. And one of the easiest ways to tell about your heart health is your resting heart rate. Well, where is your resting heart rate? 60 to 85 is where the normal level. But as an athlete using steroids, you should, be, you should be in the 50s. My heart rate is, is 48 to 53, you know? And, you know, that's just that's just where an athlete should be. You don't, you, your heart rate shouldn't be in the 70s or the 80s if you're an athlete using steroids. And when you use steroids and you bulk up and you put on a lot of mass, it is true. You do wear on your heart. So maybe your body's telling you something. Maybe your body's telling you you're overdoing it, okay? Maybe your body's telling you step off the gas pedal a little bit. So I, I would not take this lightly. I would take this as something serious. Now, if you're running a very, very harsh cycle and you know, you're only going to run, run in eight weeks or something or 10 weeks and then you're going to come off, because you want to build a lot of strength, you want to build a lot of size in a short amount of time. That's one thing, but before you even run your cycle, you should be already in good shape, and that will prevent these problems. And on the flip side, you know what? I've seen clients who were in good shape, who went on steroids, and their heart health just went to crap. Their cholesterol levels went over 200. Their blood pressure went sky high. Their resting heart rate jumped 20 points. I've seen that. So these anabolic steroids are serious business. Listen to your body. Your, a sick body is not going to give you the results you want. That, that's my opinion. A sick body will not give you the results. So those are all factors to take in mind. What do you think, Rick? What are some of the other reasons you could be feeling like crap? Well, feeling lethargic on cycle is actually pretty common, especially if you're doing something like dianabol and testosterone together. You're going to feel a little bit lethargic. And that's usually a good indication that you're growing. Times where I felt lethargic on cycle is times where, I mean, I'm a few pounds heavier it would look like every time I look in front of the mirror. So that's a sign. Uh, it has to do a lot with liver, with your liver health and different things going on. Obviously, Entugard, you want to take Entugard even if you're just taking testosterone. You want to have Tutka milk thistle and take care of your liver even if you're not taking orals. Remember, injectables do have an effect as well. So just liver health and growing are two pretty common reasons for feeling a little bit tired on cycle. Also, sleeping, okay? A lot of guys develop sleep apnea on cycle and don't know it. And you might not be sleeping as well as you used to. Also, the steroids are androgens. They are going to have an effect on your brain. And you might find yourself just a bit more anxious than usual before bedtime, which could be shaving off 
30 minutes to 45 minutes to an hour from your sleep every night. And if you add that up over a week or two, you've accumulated uh, about seven to 14 hours of missing sleep over a couple of weeks just because of some sleep apnea issues. Also, if you're taking steroids, you, maybe you're on cycle and you're stuffing your face six times a day and you might be eating pretty heavy before bed. And so when you're in there, it's just a little bit harder for your body to get comfortable in that bed uh, when you've eaten. If you've ever had one of these episodes where you're like waking up in the middle of the night and you just can't get comfortable anywhere in any position you lay in, you're uncomfortable. That's usually an indication that you've got some digestion issues going on at that very moment. And that's what that feeling is from where you can't get comfortable in the bed in the middle of the night. You, you've got some indigestion. So maybe eating too close to bedtime, uh, making it for less restful sleep. Also being too anxious, too worked up before bed, making it also hard to get full sleep in. And just sleep apnea. You might be waking up in the middle of the night, catching your breath. You might be snoring now. You, a lot of different things can come from using testosterone that could help you develop kind of like the, the, this, this chronic, worn down, tired feeling, which is not uncommon for steroid users. But you got to look at the whole, the whole package, everything from liver health, are you taking liver support supplements? Everything from the food you eat, the amounts that you eat, how much, how close to bedtime, your nighttime ritual before bed, how, how are you winding down and, and getting your brain into sleeping mode? Is it taking longer than usual now that you're on steroids and you tend to, to you know, overthink things and overreact to certain things in your mind? Is it, is it harder to wind down for bed? You got to think about all those things. Uh, and, and to sleep. I have a product called End, end to Sleep or Need to Sleep. Just... Uh, and from the N2BM store, N2BM.com. Just come check it out. N2 Sleep is great. It's got melatonin, valerian root, I mean, it, 5-HTP. It's got some great ingredients just to help you knock out and, and get some sleep. One of the best things you can do for sleeping on steroids is don't get on the bed in the bed until you're ready for, to go to sleep. And once you do get in, in bed, turn everything off. That's a good way to just kind of turn off some of that androgen anxiety I found is you don't, you don't touch the bed and get comfortable in the bed until you're ready for bedtime and make sure you turn everything off. If I lay in bed and I try to diddle with my phone or turn on the television or do anything like that, night's kind of ruined now at that point. So I, I've just found just, just if, you, if you're going to watch something, play with your phone, whatever, sit somewhere. Not until you're ready to go to sleep do you want to lay down be, and be horizontal and and be ready to turn everything off. Just a, just a quick advice for uh, steroid users out there having trouble uh, getting and falling asleep at the end of the day. Yeah, you bring up a good point about the liver too. I didn't even bring that up, but that's a really, really good point. People don't realize uh, if you're not cleansing out your liver uh, using N2 Guard, which has Kutka and other ingredients, then you're really screwing yourself. So next one, guys, is no sperm count left after TRT and two kids. So he's already have two kids with his wife. Um, he's been on TRT blasting and cruising for a couple of years. Um, he did a sperm test and he's not shooting any bullets anymore. His wife wants one more kid. So Rick, I'm going to bring you in first because you have a bunch of kids. How many kids do you have? Like six or seven with, with a bunch of women or you're, you're, a, you're a dog over there. So have you been in the situation where your wife's begged you for other kids, but you couldn't have any? Or what do you have advice for this guy? I just yesterday ran across a post by a competitor because I everybody that, that's in the industry I, I'm friends with on Facebook. And somebody sent them a picture of a positive test of a positive pregnancy test. Herbals, guys. Herbals, herbals, herbals. If you want to get your sperm count back up, herbals are the way to go. There are posts all over the forums of guys saying, I got my wife pregnant on HC Generate. Well, now it's called N2 Generate. Back then we used to call it HC Generate. Got my wife pregnant. And, and again, it's not just my combination of herbs, but when you're, when you're using mainly the Fedoja Agrestis, I think really, really helps with fertility. The Fedoja Agrestis that, that we use. 
And I think you're going to, you're going to find that across the board. It's obviously you want to go to a fertility doctor. They're probably going to have you take medications, probably have you uh, change your lifestyle a little bit, but herbals guys, herbals, 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 try, try some of some, try some of the herbal testosterone boosters. Um, for doja agrestis guys, a gram a day, thousand milligrams a day <clears throat> of a doja agrestis. Your nuts will, will be bigger, hang lower. There'll be more volume when you come. And just sperm count, guys. Just check it out. Give it a try. Uh, if it doesn't work for you, I'll return your money. HG Generate and to Generate. I've seen enough posts and gotten and have received back enough reports from guys throughout the years where I can confidently say it's, the, it's what you should try. You should, give, you should give the herbals a try. Spermatogenesis and increasing sperm count. My opinion, herbals. Herbals are the way to go. Fadoja agrestis, specifically Fadoja agrestis. If you can stack the Fadoja agrestis with Tonkat Ali, fenugreek, and tribulus, you got something going. That, that's the core of the formula in HG Generate. If you can find those ingredients, it doesn't have to be from my brand. You can buy them anywhere else. You're going to see some, you're going to feel and see the, the effects and the results. So, I mean, that's all I got to tell guys on that is herbals, definitely. And guys, by the way, this is not something new. I'm not the first guy to say herbals will help with your fertility. Go back thousands of years. You know, shaman, medicine men, witch doctors. Herbs affect the way that our bodies operate. Herbs, plants are also carbon-based life forms. A lot of the same ring structures that plants are using within their system to create signals for different parts of the plant. Some of those structures will also create and attach to receptors in our bodies and create signals. So by, by experiments and chance, men whose job has been to find medic medicines and find solutions to people's health throughout the millennia have used plants. So I'm not the first guy to propose this. Uh, you can bet pretty much every culture and back in time, guys have been taken to some form of herb or another, or some, sometimes even some animal organs were consumed in order to help their, their fertility, to have babies, create more sperm, to get their, their significant other pregnant. I mean, it's, it's not the first guy to propose this. So it definitely works. It works, and, and it's got a ton of merit. Yeah, and it uh... – it really is a good idea because you really have to come off the hormones. If you keep taking the hormones and you're trying to bring your sperm count back. Uh, that's like rolling. A, you got to get off the steroids. Out, you, know, you got to get yeah, off the I steroids. Mean, it's, yeah. it's, it's like rolling a car up a hill, like in San Francisco or something. It, um, it's just not going to work. I mean, you really have to come off because those steroids are, are signaling your pituitary glands stay dormant, stay dormant, stay dormant. We don't need you. So you really have to come off. It's not going to be fun, but the herbs that Rick was mentioning, the N2Generate ES, it's going to make you feel okay when you come off. It's going to make you, it's going to offset that crash. So you really, really want to use that. Um, and that's, that's going to give you the best chance. And, you know, I've, I've known people in this situation, Rick, um, whose wives have pressured them into having kids and it's really, really tough. Like if you're in that situation, you don't want another kid, you know, especially now uh, with the economy and shatters. I mean, the unemployment rate in the United States is 15%. It's headed to 25%, even maybe the 30% they, uh, they think. And I'd be worried about having another kid right now. And um, so, you know, you really have to talk to your wife and, and about this. Kids are expensive. I mean, we're talking a quarter million dollars the first 18 years of their life. It doesn't even count college. A quarter million dollars, that's expensive. Um, they're a big responsibility. And um, I just saw a show last night about a five-year-old who uh, got kidnapped right off their uh, front yard. They were playing in their front yard. Some guy came and kidnapped them. It's, uh, it's really, really bad, man, having kids. So I'm, I'm scared. I'd, I'd be scared to have kids. So if you don't want a kid and she wants a kid, what do you do, Rick? really quick. What, what would be your advice in that situation to someone? It's, it's a big question. It's a huge question because you, you have no idea of 
what the situation is. The last kind of really serious person that I was with, there's this girl, she, um, she wanted babies. She was about to turn 27, had no kids, and she wanted babies. And I told her we would, and I just took steroids and never really got her pregnant. So I, I, I was very dishonest in, in that situation. I felt real pressured. So even though I didn't want to, I said yes, but I kept using anabolics. I could shoot in testosterone, so, so I was sterile. But she, she couldn't say anything or make a big deal about my steroid use. I think if you're a married guy out there and your wife's already a little iffy, already not all good with you using steroids, and then she begins to feel like the steroids are the reason you're not getting her pregnant or she starts to figure it out, then now you're now, not only are you having to deal with a girl, a lady that wants babies and you don't want babies, but now you're dealing with someone who doesn't now, not only do they want babies, now they don't want you using steroids and you want to continue to enhance your physique and your lifestyle. So it can create a lot of friction, a ton. Best thing is if you don't want any more kits, just be really upfront about it. And take the initiative and go get your tubes clipped. You know? Just take the initiative and go get your shit clipped. Especially if you already had two with her. It's a done deal. I can see if maybe the two were yours and she had no babies. And then she's begging you to make her a baby. I can see that. But you already got two with her running around and you don't want any more. It's kind of sort of your choice too, right? It's not just her body, her choice. It's your choice, too, because you're legally bound to sit there and legally bound to, to support this baby financially. So, obviously, you've got to – it's your choice, too. So, I would – if you don't want any more babies, I just just clip your tubes, man. Just get, you know, get the vasectomy and, and you're, it's over with. You don't have to worry about anybody again. We're going to get into that one next time because I know so many relationships that got uh, marriages that got torn apart over. Yeah. Something. Over this, over this uh, pandemic. I can't have a, no, no, no. Over. I can't have a baby. I want a baby. I want a baby. I can't have a baby. It's a, uh, you ever seen that, that show sex in the city? Yeah. Yeah. With a Charlotte Remember, She wanted a baby yeah. so bad. And then the uh -huh. guy couldn't, couldn't give her a baby and they destroy their marriage. But if, if you're already married and you're staying with her long term and you got two, I mean, yeah, you, yeah, why not? Clip that shit. Be done. Why not? I want a baby. I want a baby. I want a baby. Oh, dude, it, get, it, it gets worse than that. It and then really they have, they adopt like two kids and then she gets pregnant and then she gets pregnant again. How many times have we seen you that? Know, you know what, you know what this girl said to me? She said, she said, Ricky, I'm turning 27 next year. If I'm not pregnant by then. You and me are done, and I'm going to see who else is out there and wants to have this baby with me. Those were her, her, her exact words. <laughs> if the baby came if the baby, Trans, Translated from uh, Spanish to English. <laughs> what happens if the baby, when it came out, white with blue eyes and, and blonde hair? Would you think it was... I have genes for that. My, uh, my grandfather is a blonde and blue-eyed, and I have uncles. I have genes for that in my family. I, it, wouldn't be, it wouldn't be rare. You wouldn't take her on Maury, huh? I think you know when baby's yours or not. I think you I think just so. know. I think you I just know. know, man. I read a stat 33% of men aren't really the father. I think, listen. I just, I just made that up. But. Listen, let me tell you something. One of the, one of the biggest problems that we have is, is, is denial, self-denial. And we get in a lot of denial about the people that we know. Like, you know if, you, if your girl's a hoe or not. You know it. You fucking know it. Whether you're in denial or not, that's you. You know if that baby's yours. You really fucking know it. Whether you want to accept that you know it or not, it's a different story. So you kind of, I think you kind of know. I think you, I think you could just kind of tell. I mean, if they're yours, everything from baby pictures to, when your kid is yours, he's going to do and say things that could have been in your mind for your whole life, but you've never done or articulated. And then you'll see this little three, four-year-old thing doing them and saying them. It's just, I think you just know. My opinion, you're in denial or maybe you're not that close to your children. 
maybe you're just kind of going through the motions and you haven't really tried to get to know that little person. Because when you know him, I think you know. That's my opinion, Steve. I don't know. All right, guys. So the next, we'll, we'll come back to that one. That's a fun one. Uh, next one's going to be check drops before a fight um, and other strategies pre-fight. So, I mean, Rick, you're the, you're the fighter. You're the MMA guy. I, I don't know much about this, but I would think, like, you take it, man. You want to be aggressive. You want to be out of your mind. Like Mike Tyson, there was a rumor he used to take check drops, and he bit the guy's ear off. I would think that you'd want to um, – you want to be crazy before a fight and have the adrenaline going and, you know, want to, want to go to war with someone. No, am I wrong on that? No, you're not wrong, buddy. I don't, I don't think you need anything else. There's a crowd. There's a motherfucker that's been training to fight with you. You, you've got a date. You set a date for this day to be ready. What else do you need, bro? You, you're walking out. People are shouting. You don't need anything else. Do fighters use steroids? Yeah. Do fighters maybe use check drops before competition? I'm pretty sure some have. Yeah, why not? Does it help and make that much of a difference? Probably not in fighting. Probably not in fighting. When it comes to fighting, different personalities require different things. You'll get guys that don't get too worked up, that don't, don't, don't get that adrenaline rush. And so the coach has to work them up. Coach has to do something to get them to get them going. You'll get guys who get too anxious, too nervous, too fired up. If they have a good coach, the coach will try to help them calm down. You can see the difference sometimes when you if you watch UFC and, and the coaches will have different fighters. When you watch what goes on at the corner, you'll notice the same coach will speak to fighters differently. So if if you watch like Ray Longo or Crew Phil Nurse or just, I mean, I could tell you all the names. You watch what some of these guys, they, they've got a different way of treating their fighters dependent who the fighter is. But no, you don't want to be going crazy. You don't want to be too aggressive. No, not, not in a sport that requires you to have precision. And look, you could be real, real aggressive and go out there and, and get caught in a submission. What are you going to do? You're not going to power out of it. I don't give a fuck how much halo, how much steroids you take. If a guy's whole body is leveraged against just the joint in your elbow, I don't give a fuck how much check drops you took. You're going to tap. And if you don't tap, your arm is going to get ripped apart. doesn't matter how much steroids are flowing through your system. It won't stop that. A lot of fighters use steroids. Yeah, why not? Does it help? If you're already a top-level guy. If you're already John Jones or Anderson Silva, you take a little bit of Master on. If you're already Mike Tyson, take a little bit of Halo. Now you're fucking Mike Tyson on Halo. Now you are Anderson Silva on Master on. Okay? But just regular fighter won't make much of a difference. If anything, it might even hurt you. You might even go out there too anxious to fight, too, too ready to go and get caught up in a submission. Or get or, or catch a shot to the to the chin and go down. I don't give a fuck how much steroids you're taking. You take a good shot to the chin, you're going down. Yeah, definitely. I I would think that your drilling in a fight would be already like sky high. I would think, you know, it just depends on uh, the timing of it. You know, it can kind depends of on the guy. Uh, depends on the guy. Some guys don't get fired up until they shake hands. Some guys don't calm the fuck down until they shake hands. I'm one of those guys. I'm fucking losing my mind all the way up. But as soon as you shake hands with someone, it's gone. Like when you shake hands, it's done. It's over with. You're not nervous anymore. Matter of fact, you start to feel like euphoric, like fun. Like it's fun at that point. All right, guys. Last topic we're going to talk about. It's a relationship one. So this is a story uh, really quick. Um, He's in a situation where his girlfriend wants to go with him to the gym. She wants to get into the fitness thing. She wants to get into the gym thing. And he would rather just go by himself. But she's always begging him to go, to go. So she, you know, it goes with him. And she kind of, I guess he feels like, hey, you know, she kind of keeps me from, you know, doing what I want to do at the gym, you know. And I can understand that. Um, you know, you go to the gym, you want to do things at your pace. 
you, you want to, I'm a very fast person with everything. I, I don't have time to wait for people, you know? And I feel like if I go with a girl, she's going to slow me down. If I go with anybody, she's, they're going to slow me down. It's just, not just girls. I mean, anybody. I don't like working out with people, period. And the way a girl can slow me down, a girlfriend, is let's say I'm benching three plates and she's bunching the bar and like another five, 10 pounds. And this has happened. What am I supposed to do here? I'm supposed to fucking unrack the weights and then let her go and then re-rack the weights and go and then finish and unrack the weights. She came and pick up the 45 pound weight to unrack it or put it back. So it's just like, it's slowing me down and it's just not, I'm not getting a good workout out of it. So I kind of feel like, you know, I'm with this guy. I'm like, you have to talk to her. You have to be like, look, you're on your program. I'm on my program. We don't have to work out together at the gym. If you want to go and with me to the gym, take your own car, you know, let me go at my pace. You go at your pace. And afterwards, you know, we're going to go 30 minutes, 40 minutes, 50 minutes, whatever. You do your thing. I do my thing. And then after, let's get back. Let's get back together. And we'll do some stretching. We'll do some stretching afterwards. We'll do some, you know, rest, uh, rest postures. We'll do some, you know, you help me stretch because she's going to be better at stretching than I am for the most part. Women are more flexible than men for the most part. Um, so we can kind of get back together after that, or we can warm up together. How about that? You could get, get to the gym, warm up together. I go do my thing. You go do your thing. And then we'll meet again and stretch at the end. How about that? But working out together and benching together and doing deadlifts together. And it just doesn't, to me, it doesn't make any sense. I like to work out on my own, uh, to begin with once in a while, you know, it's, it's fun to do it once in a while, but every time having to do that, no, it's just, it's just going to slow me down. So I'd have that talk with her, but you can't say anything, you know, where you're going to put her down or insult her. You have to do it right. And just, I think just kind of be like, look, we'll get there. We'll warm up together. Let me go do my thing. Cause my, I'm doing, I'm doing things like deadlifts and squats and squatting at 400 pounds. You're just not going to be able to work out with me. You do your thing and then we'll get back together and stretch. I think that, that kind of, you can come to a compromise and do that. And then, um, you know, do, do it that way. But I think it's great that she wants to get into it. She probably views you as her motivation, as, as her hero. And also what you could do too is offer to show her some, some uh, lifts, get her, you know, to, to do it properly, show her proper form, and then she can kind of take it from there. And hopefully she can hook up with another girl at the gym and they can work out together rather than you having to work out with her. How about you, Rick? What's your advice? He don't want to work out with you. That's it. He does not want to work out with you. It doesn't seem like he's insecure bringing you around the gym. Otherwise, he wouldn't basically make it so that now you have to go by yourself. But yeah, he doesn't want to be slowed down. He might be on the sauce and just wants to get through his workout. He might have a, a buddy that he spends time with there. And I can see, you know, if you're living with a girl and you have her, you know, 365 days a year next to you, you're looking forward to just going to the gym and hanging out with your buddy and, and talking shit. Shit talking. I mean, what else is there better to just pass the time than bullshitting with a friend? Just, let's, just, let's just talk some shit. So you can't do that around your significant other. Women can't do that around their men, and men can't do that around their women. We need that safe space to just talk shit. And the gym just becomes a great place for shit talking. So he doesn't want to work out with you. You just got to get over it. And, I mean, that's the end of it. I don't, I don't know what else. Look, I try to accommodate girls into the gym grind once in a while. You know, once in a while I might have a girl – visit me so i know she's staying with me for a week she might be going out to the gym with me the whole week that's fine but then i'm back to my regular grind i might be going to see a girl for a day or two 
I might go to the gym with her for a day or two. But that's done. It's over with. So if you can make special arrangements, that's great. But on a daily grind, you probably want to go with your regular lifting buddy. You know, a guy who can actually take the bar off your chest. Supposed to just a girl where, and if she's hot, everybody's going to be looking at her anyway. He, he doesn't like, want to work out. With you got you to gotta, you gotta give yourselves, you got to give each other space. That's what it is. It seems like you're triggered by this topic. I think, I think what could be happening, he's banging some other chick at the gym behind her back. And he don't, and she, he don't want her to find out about it. That's too dangerous. I mean, he'd have to, no, that's too dangerous because how are you going to try to pick up another girl at the gym while you live with another girl and the girl you live with goes to the same gym? The other girl's got to be in on it. The other girl's got to know you have a girlfriend, you know, and maybe, um, maybe it's one of those weird, weird, weird relationships where she knows she's the side girl and you have a, a, a regular girl, but she still kind of acts jealous of you and your girl. So like she's fine being the side piece, but if she sees you at the gym with your girlfriend, now she's going to be kind of maddish at you over it because you said things weren't that great. Something like that, maybe. But I mean, if he, or, or he's working on, other, on, a, on trying to get another girl at the gym, and, and, you know, her not finding out. I mean, it sounds pretty intricate. It sounds like that's a lot of trouble to, to go through. That, like, like that much, to go through that much trouble, it's got to be really, really worth it. Like to, to try to finagle getting into another girl's panties while you live with a girl and go to the same gym. And that's, that's intricate, dude. Respect if you're doing all of that. Respect, but... It's something, I mean, it's different. I don't know. I, I wouldn't, that's a, that's a lot of work. Yeah, and she probably has a meathead boyfriend too herself that um, if, he, if he found out about it too, you know, he'd probably be mad. It's funny because with, with women, you're, only, you're always the only guy they're seeing. That's why women always you never say, the only guy there was what the fuck are you they 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 always say that they always like oh you're the first guy to come over to, hey how do you like my new place I've only been here six months you're the first guy to come over or you're the first you're the only you're the only guy I I, I went out with you know in the past uh, year you know you're always the only guy and then you find out she's got like six other guys at the gym all fucking these meatheads with you know, you know those what big I say you know what I say I don't I don't care what you do. Just don't fucking sit here and lie about it. Try to paint another picture. Because women that do that, women that say, oh, I don't go out with anybody else. I don't do anything else. But they do. If they're ever confronted with the truth, they'll say, well, you and I were not official, so I didn't really have to tell you. Yeah, I, yeah. I kept saying over and over and over again that you're the only guy I went out with. But even though it wasn't true, doesn't matter that it was not true because I didn't really even have to tell you anyway. So, so that's very odd logic for, for a person to have. I usually just very flat out just say, look, I don't, I don't really care about your past or even at this point what your present is like. But, but you keep coming at your face saying all these things, painting it like you're the perfect person. And later on, I find out you're a liar. That's going to shave a hell of points off. See, I don't care if you're a free spirit and – you know, you do whatever the fuck. That's fine. Just don't try to go really hard trying to convince me otherwise because now you're just a lonely liar. I think you, you ought to just make that clear because I think the lies, and again, lie from the context of, look, I'm not asking you shit so you don't have to lie. Not lie in the context of like, I'm pressuring you to know what's going on in your private life, even though we're not official and we don't have anything really. I'm just going to like on the sneak tip side work kind of get into your business and ask you shit. See, cause that's also not cool if you're not official. So you have to kind of know where you stand. Right. So, I mean, there is a, there is a line where you start to put people against the wall and make them lie to you. But if you don't do that, if you're not asking, if you're not asking for, for, for information, if you're not asking them to report to you, but they decide to report on their own and the reporting is all lies, then you've got a problem. That's not a long, that's not a long-term solution, long-term person to deal with for anyone. All right, guys. So this is another fun episode. We're going to have more. 
next episode, guys. Next week, we'll do another Q&A. So I appreciate you guys listening. Keep in touch. Let us know any questions you have. Steve Smee and Rick, another episode of Evolutionary Radio. Talk to you guys next week. Have a good one. Have a good one, Steve. Have a good one, guys. Guys, this has been a required legal disclaimer. We are only sharing our experience from years of steroid use. We are not doctors, and none of what we say should be regarded as medical advice. Always check with your doctor before taking any drugs or starting any training program.